Hey guys, this is Melissa. I have Hallie with me today and Harper Lee, and we are going to um, bring your family devotion this week. So girls, we're going to be talking about fruit this week. So what are some of your favorite fruits? What's your favorite fruit? Mine's um, watermelon and um, oranges. Watermelon and oranges? I love peaches. Peaches, okay. And peaches. what you hate peaches? What words do you think about when you think of fruit? How would you describe fruit? I would say, like, I don't know. Did you like Healthy. This guy? Healthy. What about juicy? Juicy. Oh, <laughs> tasty. Yeah. Tasty. Those are some of the words you would describe. What about, how would you know if fruit was rotten? Like if it wasn't good to eat? How would sometimes you know? It stinks and it turns black or gray. Yeah, sometimes it stinks. And, um, you can um, tell because um, it has black marks and it always has like brown. Yeah, so sometimes the color changes, sometimes the smell changes, or maybe oh, it's mushy. Totally bananas. Bananas. Oh, she hates bananas. Yes, <laughs> bananas. So what about, would you eat a piece of rotten fruit? Oh, no. No? Mm. Would you eat a piece of rotten fruit? If I didn't know it was rotten. Enough. If you didn't know it was rotten, okay. Well, today. I, I would do that if it, I did. Or if my eyes are closed. Like, yeah. Oh. Today we're going to be talking about the fruits of the Spirit, which is part of Galatians. And I'm going to read it to you. And Paul was trying to teach the church of Galatia how to live with the fruits of the Spirit. The Spirit talking about the Holy Spirit. So how to be more Christ-like. So do you think that's a good idea to be more like Christ, more like Jesus? Uh, yeah, because he's our soul. He's in our soul. That's right. So it's a good idea even today, even though this is hundreds of years later, to know what the fruits of the Spirit are and how we can live like that. So I'm going to read Galatians 5, verse 22. It says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. So those are less nine different fruits of the Spirit. So we're going to go through those and we're going to talk about each one. So first up is love. So as we talk about love, I'm going to give y'all some watermelon to start tasting. And as you taste that watermelon, I want us to talk about love. Why is love or how does God show his love to us? Um, he shows my like bless it like when he blesses us or whatever when he blesses us okay so maybe when he sends blessings how how did jesus show his love for us harper because um he made us and um he's our soul and um he made us that's a pretty good act of love so why do you think it was important for paul to include love do you think it's important for us to love one another do you think it's important for us to show love still today no. you do why why is it important to show love because um, he died on the cross for us, and okay. it's like we had to respect and love. We had to respect and love. So maybe the same love he showed us, he wants us to show others. Do you think that's that's pretty accurate? Okay. So as you're eating that watermelon now, I want us to talk about joy. So when I think of joy, I think about grapes because I love purple grapes. So as you try some of these. As you try some of these purple grapes, let's think about joy. So what is it that brings you joy, Harper? What brings you the most joy? Because, um, mm -hmm. Do you know what joy means? Yeah. Okay, what brings you joy? God. God. What else, Harper, Hallie, what brings you joy? Um, it brings me joy knowing that God's always with me. And okay. That was good that God's always with you. That brings you joy. What about God? What do you think brings God joy? When we obey Him. <laughs> when we obey Him. <laughs> okay. So what do you think? How can we bring joy to other people? So we talked about what brings us joy. Um, what brings me joy is seeing y'all grow and getting to be your mom. We talked about what brings God joy. So how can we show joy to other people? We can be nice. We can be nice them. and respect them. Okay, that's a good start to show joy to other people. <laughs> okay, the next one is peace. So when we think about peace, let's let's eat some cantaloupe. Let's just eat one piece of cantaloupe as we talk about peace. Okay, with peace. Why is peace important? Why do you think Paul mentioned peace when he was talk, telling us how to live? What is peace, Harper? Do you know? 
What is peace, peace Hallie? Is like harmony or like okay. just calm. Calm. Nice. Okay. So does God give us peace? How does God give us peace? Because when he died on the cross, he took away all of our sins. Okay. That and he took all of our sins, it kind of gives us peace. Now. It does give us peace, yeah. And maybe if we're going through hard mm -hmm. times, God can show us peace. Maybe when we can't find that peace ourselves, we can we can turn to God. Okay, the next one is patience, which is one that mom is still learning. So let's talk about patience, and we're going to try some strawberries, another fruit of the Spirit. So Harper, do you know what the word patience means? What does it mean to be patient with someone? Stop what you're doing and wait. Stop what you're doing and wait. That's a good example. Hallie, what is, what is patience? Patience is when, like, if somebody is doing something and you're not, if, when you're not being patient, you're just like, come on, come on, like, okay. hurry, but you can sit down and be patient. Um, that's always right. Okay. It's sometimes hard. It is hard, that's right. So how did God show us patience? Or how does God show us patience? How do you think He has to be patient with us sometimes? Because we sin and He has to be patient. Like, when we do sin, He has to be patient for us to realize or okay. like say sorry. Yeah, and even as parents sometimes, it's hard for us to be patient with our kids if maybe they're doing the same thing wrong over and over. And the same thing with God. Sometimes we are messing up and messing up, but God is so patient with us. And it was important enough for Paul to tell us about that and say that God's love is patient. Um, and so how do you think we can be patient with one another? Do you think you do a good job, Harper, of being patient with another person? You do? I wait on my best friends to um um, come on and swing with you. To come swing with you, okay. At William and Lori's. At William and Lori's. How do you, Hallie, how can we show patience or be patient with others? We can, um, like one word, just wait. <laughs> yeah, just wait, that's right. Sometimes it's not our turn to talk. Um, sometimes we just, we have to be patient. And sometimes it's being patient with God and waiting for God to give us the right answer or the answer that we need to hear. Okay, so the next word is kindness. The next fruit is kindness. So let's try some kiwi. Some kiwi kindness. Some kiwi kindness. Okay, kindness, that's a pretty easy word. Harper, what does it mean to be kind to someone? Oh, there you go. What does it mean to be kind to someone, Harper? Say sorry. Okay, so sometimes kindness is through words. We can show through our words to be kind. Sometimes it's actions. Hallie, how can how is what's a way that you could be kind to someone? I can be kind by like letting them borrow something or just being nice. Okay. How about what with the with the Bible? How do you think God showed us kindness? For, he forgives us, and that's mm -hmm. kind. Yeah, that is kind, right? It's something that we don't deserve, but He still does that for us. So that was definitely kind for God to send Jesus and to die for us. That God um, tried to, to, if there's an emergency and God is trying to um, help us, He's trying to... To be kind? Yeah, He's trying to um, help the fire to get... God is trying to help us. Yeah, sometimes there's emergencies and God's there to help us. That is definitely kindness. Okay, the next fruit of the Spirit is goodness. So when I think of goodness, I think of plums because plums are just so good and juicy. So let's talk about goodness. It's kind of the same as kindness, but how would you describe goodness, Hallie? He said same as kind, but... Goodness is kind of like obeying. Okay. And like trusting, I guess. Trusting. Uh, do you not like that plum as much, Harper? Okay. So how could you how could you show goodness to maybe your mom or dad, Harper? <laughs> I don't think she's liking it too much. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> Hallie, how did God show goodness to us? That's the important one. How did God show it to us? Goodness to, like, 
I feel like it's still like he forgives us for doing like horrible things uh -huh. even though we don't deserve to even live. Yes. And he still forgives us for doing like, So when doing when we're not good or when we're not showing kindness, how can we ask for forgiveness? By praying. By praying. Okay, and the Bible says for us to pray and anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And so maybe when we don't have the goodness that the fruit of the spirits is referring to, we can ask for forgiveness just like you said <laughs> and get and get that forgiveness. Okay, let's move on to the next one since you didn't like that one. The next one is faithfulness. So what does it mean? We're going to try some peach. Peach. Yes, peach. Peach. Peach is really good. Peach is really good. Okay, so the word faithfulness, what do you think about when you hear the word faithfulness? What does it mean to be faithful? Have you ever heard that, Harper? Faithful? No. So what does it mean to be faithful? What do you think about when you hear that word? Um, faithful is trusting and um, like being faithful in your word. Or okay, that's like a very good example. Okay, so if I described um, Mr. Michael, Brother Michael, as faithful, is that a good thing or a bad thing to be faithful? Good thing. That's a good thing to be faithful, right? And so our number one example for faithfulness is Jesus because he said he was going to do something. He came to earth and he did what he was going to say. He was faithful in his word. So that's important for us. That's why it's part of this lesson is because it's good for us to be faithful in our word. Even if the peach isn't always good, God's word is always it's faithful. Good. It is good? Okay, good. Okay, the next word is gentleness. Harper, what does it mean to be gentle? What do you think that means? Don't hit people with gentleness. The next fruit that we're talking about with gentleness is green grapes. So if you're gentle with someone, are you real rough with them? No. So Hallie, how is God gentle? That's kind of a weird way, maybe not weird, but a different way to to describe God as gentle. What do you think Paul's referring to when he's telling us to be gentle so that we can be one with the Spirit? Um, it's kind of hard. Yeah? Do you like it when someone's more gentle with you and soft-spoken or well, do you... Sometimes when sometimes. you're like, wrestling or... Yeah, when you're wrestling maybe my not. My brothers. Yes. I like it when they're I like oh, the yeah, rough. My, but... the, the brothers wrestle. Yeah, the brothers hard. wrestle too hard. Oh, Okay, so to be gentle, I think, in this, in this sense, it. yes, it He's means to be kind and humble, maybe soft-spoken, and just be gentle with people, maybe not to hurt their feelings, to be kind. It's kind of a lot of these different characteristics wrapped into one. What are some things you consider gentle? Do you think a tiger's gentle? No. No. What about... Oh, lions are my favorite animals. But they're not gentle, okay? Oh, Steffi birds. Birds? You think birds are oh, gentle? The, chick the chickies are no. The, the chickies? chickies from Mommy. Farmer Joe has yeah. chickens. Do you oh. think those are gentle? Baby chicks, yes. are they gentle? Yes. They're delicate and gentle and they're so sweet and fluffy. That was a good they description. Claws. Yeah, they have claws. <laughs> there they go. <laughs> okay, so the <laughs> last <laughs> the last fruit that we're gonna talk about oh, is self-control. Yes. So Yes, yes, yes. Self-control, and we're going to try oranges, which I know that y'all love. So what does it mean to have self-control? Hallie, do you want to answer that one? What is what is self-control? Self-control is being like all aware, I guess. Not okay. Really, but self-control is not getting angry and like hitting or okay. getting violent. More like. Okay, so self-control is talking about yourself and being in control of yourself. So why, why is that important? Why does Paul tell us if we want to be like Christ, we should have self-control? Why would that be important? Well, maybe because when Jesus was, like, nobody believed him that he was actually Jesus and he had to keep some things to himself that okay. he told that he would be, like, the most popular guy ever. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can have another one. Okay, so self-control is maybe not getting angry as fast, maybe when something doesn't go our way. Is it hard to not get angry at your brother sometimes, Harper? It's hard. It is hard. It is very hard. But could you imagine a world when no one... They're too mean. They're too mean. They're too mean. 
Could you imagine if no one had self-control, would that be chaos or peaceful? If no one had self-control, that yes. would be chaos. And we already know that we want to have peace and we want to be gentle and goodness. So if we want all those things, one way to get to that is self-control. Yeah. So it's very important for us to have self-control and to watch our words. Make sure we're using words that encourages one another and not puts each other down. Is that orange really good? Another piece. another piece. Well, y'all are in luck because I have one more piece of fruit, okay? And I'm going to give it to y'all, and then I'm going to see if y'all want this piece of fruit, okay? That's rotten. That's rotten. Okay, what about this fruit? No! No! I'm not eating that! You're not eating it, but why? It's a banana, and you love bananas. It's rotten! How do you know it's rotten? It's hot. How do you know it's rotten? I have a tie. That's hot. How do you know it's, it's rotten, Harper? Hot. It's burnt? It was in the oven. It was totally in the oven. It was totally in the oven. Okay, so Harper, looking at this, hold on, look. Looking at this fruit, what color is it? Black. And what color is a banana supposed to be? Yellow. So sometimes we can tell a fruit is rotten. Hold on, I'm going to show you. Sometimes we can tell a fruit is rotten just by the outside of it, but sometimes we have to break no. it open and see that it's just all Give mushy on the inside. No, Harper, let it, let's put it down in there. Sometimes we have to look at the insides and, it, and you can see how mushy it is. So would y'all eat this rotten piece of fruit? No. No. So how do you think we can make ourselves, listen Harper, how do you think we can make sure ourselves, our person is not is not getting rotten. How can you make sure that your attitude is not rotten? Thinking before you say something. Thinking before. What about if we used all these fruits of the Spirit that we talked about? Peace, love, gentleness, kindness. That would make us be a better person. It would make us more Christ-like and that would make sure that we were not rotten either on the inside or the outside. Sometimes you can just look at someone you can say, oh, they probably have a rotten attitude. Or sometimes when they talk to you, maybe they're using harsh words and you, they just have a rotten attitude. They're not being Christ-like. So we want to make sure we are not like that rotten banana, don't we, Harper? Because it's mushy. It's just nasty, right? So we want to make sure that we're not letting our rotten attitude control us. Because if we want to be like Christ-like, that we, we do not want to be rotten. You th do you agree, Harper? Do you agree? It smells really good. It smells really good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this week, I want y'all, we went through a lot of different characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. And I want y'all to, to think about one, focus on one. Maybe it's love or joy or peace and really work towards becoming more that way. Maybe you don't have peace all the time and you need to pray for peace. Maybe you're not joyful all the time. Harper's always joyful, always. but maybe you're not. <laughs> maybe mom needs to work on her patience because I'm not always patient with you. So that's something that as we read more in the Bible that we can talk about more with other people and that we can pray for so that we can make sure our attitudes are more Christ-like. Does that sound good? High five. High five. Good job, guys. Thanks for joining us this week, guys. Make sure you tune in next week as we have another family devotion with Shelly and friends. Bye. Bye. <laughs> What does it mean to be faithful? Mm, this is good. <laughs> you can spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> this is gold. Okay, okay. It won't swallow. <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs>